scenes characterized the better part of today's special setting of the National Assembly that saw the finance bill with raft of controversial taxes, including the 8% fuel VAT passed. Our reporter Duncan Haimba was there and he witnessed the back and forth, the shouting that was there in Parliament and now joins us. Uh, he's live, I believe, from Parliament. Duncan, good evening. Um, just paint for me a picture of what exactly transpired today. Good evening, Linda. Yes, I'm um, just still trying to uh, gather more information. I'm not interrogating uh, Honorable Milio Diambo, but I'm just trying to uh, pick uh, more information, of course, on what transpired uh, in the National Assembly. And I must confirm that, uh, yes, I was in the gallery throughout, and I witnessed a bit of uh, the drama, if you may call it, on what was actually going on. So this is what we can, uh, for starters, Linda, before I engage uh, uh, Honorable Milio Diambo, this is what we can be able to tell the country now. I've just left Parliament 10 minutes ago. The Majority Leader, Eden Duale, has confirmed that tomorrow at 8 a.m. he will be at State House to present to the President the report of today's progress. And he says in his own words, the President's pen is waiting. The President is just counting until tomorrow morning for him to assent to that uh, proposal that he had given to Parliament. This being the import of what uh, the Budget and Appropriations uh, Chair Kimani Shungwa has said, and he has told me that uh, they can report to the country that the presidential memorandum was passed without a single amendment. And it's on that premise that tomorrow morning at eight in the morning, they will be uh, presenting it to the president for him to sign to what he had actually proposed to parliament when he rejected the 2018 financial bill and then he wrote a memorandum back to parliament or to the national assembly uh, giving proposals among the highlight in that proposal of course the reduction of the vat okay. from 16 to 8 percent it has also been confirmed that yes linda um, just before you go on, um, it would be important that we let our viewers know why exactly there was a contention with this specific bill with the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi finding himself in a tight spot. Haimba, stay with me. I want us to listen in to how that vote was conducted right now. Question members, which is at close 18 of the bill being amended as proposed in the reservations by his excellency the president by deleting paragraph b honorable members will as many as of that opinion say i, I will as many Contrary opinion say nay. Yeah. The eyes have it. <laughs> However, that has been doing rounds on social media uh, for the better part of the evening. So you're talking about the fact that leader of majority Edin Duale says this will now find its way to the president? Yes, and uh, we've asked him about that particular session because it is on that basis that uh, members, infuriated members, are holding on to, on to that clip. And like, uh, the KTN clip that is making round in WhatsApp uh, groups, particularly I've seen members of the National Assembly sharing, and it's what they are clinging on. Perhaps it's what they'll be displaying to the public, that they stood their ground to try and veto the presidential memorandum. This is what we have asked the uh, National Assembly Majority Leader. At what point does he think the eyes carried the day? And this is his explanation. He says out of the 349, remember there's already a confusion on how at one point the electronic system indicated that the House has 
352 members. The majority leader says that at any given point, on top of the 349, there are three clerks in the house. And therefore, when you add the three, the number makes 352. And he says that is why members are always asked to remove their cards before they log in. But that is a subject of debate because the members have said that they know, for instance, he has confirmed that 45 members of the National Assembly are out of the country. So when you remove that number from the 349, it comes to about uh, 334, uh, 334 thereabout. And now he says he was in charge of at least 90 members of parliament, and he confirms he escorted about 70 out of the chambers. Then he remained with 20 that were now facing the, the team Mwanainch, as they were calling themselves, or the team Nays, in which Milio Diambo, I think, was the leader, or the ring leader of that particular one, that they were standing their ground. So he says when you remove the, the 70, that the 90 that uh, were team yes, then the number comes to 214, 215, and that now explains why the number when they, they did the, the, the head count, which members are disputing, it now indicates why there were 215 in the house. But I think I'll ask to, I'll talk to whoever was in that house who, who witnessed every detail that uh, happened, and Moshimu Amili, maybe you'll start by giving us a blow-by-blow -blow account. So at uh, seven minutes past uh, three, the question is put, then the eyes and the knees. But the speaker says, according to the Hansard, which he can rely on, as of 3.20, the eyes had it. How did that one happen? Well, uh, you know I'm a, a lawyer by training, but there are some things that you have to be a dunderhead. To, 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 to agree with. Because some of these things, even to a little kid, can see. I think you have even seen it yourself. Uh, when the eyes uh, shouted, you could hardly hear them. And when the nays shouted, I mean, it was the loudest. It was almost like an earthquake. So really, that's what in law sometimes we call recipsa locuta. The facts speak for themselves. You know, the facts were speaking so loud that the eyes had it. But over and above that, they were so of us to us confirming the numbers even after his team walked out who are not 70 we know them i even have the list here i have the list of the members who are in because i spent the whole afternoon writing the members who are in we were more than 215 that they are alleging or 212 i don't know what they were saying we we passed the, the number required and their own numbers they were hardly 20. and at some point i went and was pushing them and closed the the the, the door because they were even violating our own standing orders. Because the standing orders are so clear that once the division uh, is called, you cannot move out and you cannot come in. But they were violating. They were violating that rule and moving in and moving out. So we pushed them out and closed the door. And even after closing the door, Ichungwa was still on the other door trying to push uh, members out. And we insisted, and after that I insisted on, uh, on writing. And you remember even part of my uh, co comments to the speaker is we need to know the numbers even now as we are in the house. And the speaker was reluctant to give us those numbers because it would have shamed them that even at that point, we, were, we had the quorum even at the point. So they are saying the, uh, the presidential memorandum has passed without a single uh, amendment on it. And uh, this leads me to the question, why were your voices not heard, the team nays, the team one inch as you're calling yourselves, the, those who are opposing the memorandum, why is it that it's not captured anywhere in that uh, uh, your reservations or your, your dissent, whatever the president was proposing, is not reflected? Actually, even at the point that now the speaker was insisting and calling out all these things, uh, 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 you know, close by close, and we were standing. And if you are standing, if you follow the standing orders, it means that we were on our feet, meaning he should have called a division on every single one of those positions. And because he failed to follow the, the, the divisions, it means he refused to have us heard. He refused to, you know, so he took away our representation roles by exactly what he was doing. It looked like there was already a script uh, that had numbers, and part of that script was to send some members out of the country. Some of them left yesterday for a, a, for, for, for a UN meeting that they don't have to go to because they are not the ones presenting. It's just a meeting like any other meeting. But strategically, they were meet, made to leave yesterday to deny quorum. But members refused. I was in Dar myself. I came back. 
because I had to make sure that we got those numbers. So we, we, what I can tell you is that this is very reminiscent of the security loss amendment bills 2014, where things were done in a chaotic order. The matter went to court, and the court ruled that uh, what we did was null and void. Some members have claimed that there was intimidation. At some point, I was in the press gallery, and I've, I saw a heated uh, exchange between Ruaraka member of parliament, TJ Kajuang, and uh, your uh, super counterpart from the south, who is the ODM chair, John Mbadi. And uh, they are saying there was that intimidation, and this leads to the question. At some point, when uh, Soipan Tuya said that uh, if that is the case, then let us have every member be counted one by one, the vote yes and no, and it is said that uh, you rejected. Why did members refuse to be counted one by one, they vote yes or no? Was it because of the intimidation members are saying they've been subjected to? No, it's not that we actually were saying they refused to say what we, to do what we asked. We said, first of all, let's confirm the numbers. Ordinarily, what you do is confirm the numbers electronically. They refused to, to, to use the electronic method. Then now we said, okay, we even queued, if you remember. We even queued so that we were to be counted. They refused to do that. So there was a script which was to be followed, and that is part of the reason that even TJ was being uh, threatened. People were being told they are going to be de-whipped from committees. People were being told we are going to uh, de-campaign you in your constituencies. So we were being given so many threats where we were. And actually, Kaluma was... Oh, I think some would even hit Kaluma at some point uh, around where Dwale was. There was a scaffold around Kaluma and Honorable uh, Moses Kuria and around Dwale. And the people ran in. I remember Honorable Dori ran and uh, came to save uh, Kaluma when these guys were trying to beat up Kaluma. So there was a lot of, they were trying to intimidate. The only reason they were not able to is because our numbers were overwhelmingly. Too many for them. Talking of the numbers, you are moving around with the list and I could see you crossing the floor. What number were you having? And we do understand at some point some lists were also snatched from you. Maybe could you confirm and who exactly did the snatching? Yes, because what I was doing is I was going around after they refused to do those numbers. So I made it my own uh, business to go around and list the numbers, the members who are there. And uh, by the time that they snatched uh, one piece had hidden the others, but because people were running in front, to, to go and uh, deny the speaker what he was doing. So I ran with one. One of them grabbed it from my hand. I don't know who, but they grabbed it from my hand. But still, of the list I have, we are 100 and before the one they've grabbed. We are 194 even that late mm -hmm. with one list grabbed. And that is without counting them. If you count them, then we are now as <laughs> we have the numbers that we, we, we wanted. Because if, the reason why they are not being honest, mm -hmm. if indeed they have the numbers that they are saying, all they needed to do was to stay in and vote and defeat us. Mm -hmm. Because then we wouldn't have gotten the numbers if we didn't have the numbers. And, uh, why did they walk out if they, 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 if they didn't think we had the numbers? Finally, what next? Because clearly the, major, the minority or the majority, there's the one that had their say, we can't tell which one had their say and which one has had their way, but we know one that has had their way. And they've said tomorrow morning the president will be ascending to that particular exercise to rubber stamp it or to endorse it. What next? Because, and I'm asking what next in the sense that uh, uh, some members have left them, like Honorable Richard Onyonka has said, the you people are mobilizing to go to court. And this is the question. Your party leaders in 2014, court went to court as a coalition to challenge the security uh, laws, the security Security Amendment uh, Bill of 2014. This time round, uh, the party leaders of WIPA, ODM, Jubilee, they are seem to be reading from the same script. So, moving to court, who is uh, who will be going under uh, the blessing of uh, which, what particular party under the representation, or is it individually? What I can tell you is that what we are doing for us today was as members of parliament, and we have done our bit as members of parliament, however unfair. It was. And I can tell you, even though this is sort of kind of typical of Kenya, that you, <laughs> you know, it's not about a case of the majority having their way and minority their say. This is a case where it is minority having their way and having their say, even when they didn't have a way. Really, so it's a very uh, convoluted system and uh, where the minority are pushed off the, the, the way. But then the next step of action is uh, for any interested member. It doesn't have to be a party because there was no party position. I mean, I mean in terms of the voting, the, you could see members were voting individually. There were as many members of ODM that were voting uh, no, 
uh, than uh, there were more actually than the ones who are outside. The same with the Jubilee. It was the same thing. So it was really uh, a cross-party uh, issue because of the uh, community interest. It was a, a, an issue that is in the public interest. People were bothered about what is of benefit to the public. So individuals can go out and uh, um, individual members can go to court if they want. Finally, briefly, the decorum of the House again, decorum of procedures of the House, dignity of the House, dignity of the Speaker as the symbol of that House, where does it leave this? Because once again, we've seen the almost chaotic scenes of uh, 2014 again uh, 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 taking place uh, this afternoon. So in terms of that aspect, do you think, um, again, the dignity of the house, the decorum of the house, the speakers, uh, uh, the speakers, the person, do you think it has also been demeaned once again? Oh, definitely it's been demeaned once again. And I really think what we need to do is really be true to our standing orders, be true to our laws, be true to the Constitution. And if we do that, even if this case this was defeated, then uh, really all the president needed to do again is uh, even with the leave of the uh, parliament after we have actually tweaked the areas that we are not happy about, then you could actually reconsider because we have very good suggestions to give. Like, I mean, budget committee, we had very good suggestions, but we are not allowed to talk about them because finance is the one, the finance committee is the one that are dealing with the revenue raising measures. Yeah. Well spoken, uh, Linda. There you have it, uh, Suba North Member of Parliament, Mili Odiambo who says they've done their bit as members of the National Assembly. It is for the public to judge, mm. and in her own words, it is that case where the minority had their say and their way because she believes uh, the majority had their way, but maybe it's one of those rare moments when the minority seem to have to have both their say and their way. Heimer. I think uh, for, that's where we would want to leave it, Linda. Hold on, Haimba. Um, just before I let you go, um, a lot of fingers were pointed at leader of majority, Edin Duale, that he led a couple of members of parliament outside parliament when that vote was being taken. Let's listen to TJ Kajuang just uh, before I get a quick reaction from you, then we let you go. Mr. Speaker, sir, we were 304. I have not called anybody. I have not called anybody. We were 300, 234. When Don Duale led a hound of people away, all of them went. Mr. Speaker, sir, what do you want to rule on? Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to get your attention. I request your attention, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. One of the issues you have to rule on is whether after a vote has been called and when there is no division, he is distracting me, and when there is no division called, are members able to leave the chamber? Uh, and if they leave the chamber, is that, is that discounted from the general uh, membership of the plenary when we started with the vote? Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, sir, I will leave for the rest, but that one issue, you need to decide whether it was, first of all, in order for Duale to leave his people, no, Honorable Duale, to leave his people, and two, if they went out, is that discounted from the general membership of the plenary? Okay, you can do nothing. This is stupid. However, did you address this with the leader of majority? Did he lead members of parliament out, out of uh, the plenary? Yes, Linda, I can confirm, and we've asked the majority leader whether indeed he was responsible, and his answer was emphatically a big yes. Okay. He says that is a house of cards. He says that is what they transact in, and strategically, he needed to know, and that is from that uh, explanation is where he has given me that breakdown, okay. that he knew the numbers. For instance, he says in the morning their numbers were not in, and then in the afternoon they were in, and he says when the speaker has given them the 15 minutes break, he even got more numbers, because in his own words, he says the party leaders, he says the president and the deputy president called members, and if they, had, if they would have done a division, then the numbers that were against would have significantly reduced. So he says okay. during that speak, that period when the speaker 
speaker called for a 15 minutes break the party leaders the deputy presidents to quote the majority leader was calling individual members and okay. asking whipping them to tow the party line and Time he up. says it is his business as a majority leader to make sure that the government business calls uh, carries the day and that's what he did okay. including leaving Time about up. 70 out and remaining with a small number okay sorry i have to interject because i need to take a break you're watching it in prime Thank you so much for staying with us. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll get reactions from Kisumu and Eldoret as well.